If you feel overwhelmed by the idea of filming your YouTube videos or if you freeze up on camera as soon as you press record, it's not because you're awkward. It's because you don't have a process. Okay, maybe you are awkward. I guess I don't know that for sure, but take it from a fellow awkward girly. Just because you feel awkward doesn't mean that you come across as awkward on camera. I've spent the past 10 years practicing and honing my skills of making YouTube videos. And let's be honest, it is a pretty niche and specific skill. You just film things a certain way when you're the one who wrote the script and you're the one who's going to be editing the footage. Even if you're familiar with filming yourself or other in other contexts, YouTube really is its own beast with its own set of strategies and tactics for being more efficient with your filming and getting a better end result. So today I'm gonna share my exact process for filming my YouTube videos that will allow you to quickly create highly engaging videos that you don't cringe at while you're editing. <laughs> feeling confident on camera and also feeling satisfied with your end result has so much to do with having the right setup. You don't need need fancy gear, but you do need to be conscious of your lighting conditions and your audio if you want to be happy with the final video. Let's take a look at my setup so that you can get a sense of what you might want to do. So I set up to film in a few different locations, obviously, but I tend to film a lot in front of my desk. That's probably my primary setup. So I like to film with my Sony ZV-E10 and a Sigma 16 millimeter lens. I record my audio with a Rode Video Micro. So I put all those components together and I mount them on my Peak Design tripod. This is my ideal setup, but like I said, you can use your phone. You could use a cheaper camera than this. I just personally am a big fan of Sony cameras and I love the 16 millimeter lens because it's quite wide so I can get a nice wide frame, but it also provides that depth of field by having the 1.6 aperture. Also the Rode Video Micro is just elite. It is very affordable. I I think it's like $40 or something like that. It doesn't need any batteries. You just plug it in and you have great audio. Okay, so I set up this tripod in front of my desk, which is right next to a big window. So I've got a lot of nice natural light coming in from my left side, but I like to fill in the shadows on the right side of my face with this LED light panel by Aperture. So I set it up on another tripod and I add this very fancy diffuser over top just to make the light a little bit less harsh. Obviously these things are all relative, but I think this is quite an affordable and minimalist setup, especially compared to what you'll see a lot of other YouTubers using. And if you want any more details or links to anything that I mentioned, you can check out my free content creator gear guide. I've got it linked in the description. If you want to level up your videos and make them even more engaging, then I would encourage you to switch up locations, film in a few different places. As you can see, I'm a big fan of doing that. And I just think it adds a lot to the video, makes it feel less stagnant, and it just shows that you put some more effort in. Filming in a couple different locations paired with lots of B-roll, I think is a great formula for a more engaging video. What I tend to do in a lot of my videos is I'll have like multiple different talking points, say three different points, and then I'll film each main topic or talking point in a different location. All right, so you've got a setup that's gonna make whatever you film look great on camera, but now you need to actually decide what you're going to film. <laughs> if you wanna be fast at making your videos, but you also want them to be engaging and have lots of great visuals, then you need to make a shot list. A shot list is basically just a bullet point list of all of the different shots that you want to get for your video. Your most basic list, let's say if you're planning to film your video in a couple different locations, might look like this. Talking point number one, sitting at my desk. Talking point number two, sitting in the hammock chair. And talking point number three, sitting on the couch. Now, like I said, that's very basic. That's if you're not planning on really adding any other footage other than that, but at least it will help you to remember to get those different shots and to move around while you're filming. Now, as you advance and you want to include more visuals, then your shot list is going to become more extensive. For example, the shot list for the earlier section of my video might look like this. Close up of camera, close up of attaching camera to tripod, wide angle of attaching camera to tripod, wide angle of talking to camera. These are the kinds of lists that I make when I plan videos like this. I am figuring out all of the shots that I need to get as I'm writing my script, and then I'm grouping them by location or just by what makes sense chronologically so that when I go to film, I don't have to do a ton of jumping around. For example, for this video, I had a scene where I showed you how I set up for filming, right? Well, I actually filmed that 
before I recorded any of this stuff because I had to set up to film this video. So it just kind of worked out. So you just want to think about those things. You don't have to film your video in chronological order and creating a shot list helps you figure out the complete list of everything that you need to capture to make your video great. And then you can reorder that shot list in the order that it makes the most sense to film. And a lot of this comes down to when you are scripting your video, you want to be continually asking yourself, how can I represent this in a visual way? You don't want to forget that the whole point of YouTube is that people are watching it, right? This isn't a podcast. It's not a blog post. You really want to take advantage of those visuals. Thankfully though, you don't always have to film your own B-roll if you don't physically have the space or the items that you want to film, or if you're just running out of time, then you're going to want to check out the sponsor of today's video, Storyblocks. If you've watched my channel for a while, you'll know that I am a big fan of Storyblocks. I myself am a happy longtime customer of the platform. Storyblocks is a stock media website. It is a library of thousands and thousands of clips and assets that you can use to make your videos more engaging, whether that be stock footage, animation templates, sound effects, background music. I personally use assets from Storyblocks every single week in these videos. You may have noticed I love this little paper animation background for some titles. Found that on Storyblocks. This film flicker effect that I like to use on some title cards, also from Storyblocks. And when it comes to editing my travel vlogs for my vlog channel, Katie and Dan in a van, I love using Storyblocks to fill in the gaps from different cities that we visited. For example, I'm not gonna fly a drone in Rome, but you know what a professional drone pilot did and it's uploaded on Storyblocks and now I can use it to make my video better. Also, Storyblocks is awesome because you pay one subscription fee and get access to everything. You don't have to worry about it adding up through an a la carte pricing structure like a lot of stock media libraries have. Instead, you pay one price and you can just access everything. So you can make your videos awesome while staying inside your budget. If you wanna grab some high quality B-roll for your own videos, then check out Storyblocks at the link in the description or just go to storyblocks.com slash Katie. So you might imagine that your favorite YouTubers are all one take wonders, getting their lines perfect on the first try every single time, but that is definitely not the case. I get asked all the time in my Instagram DMs what teleprompter I use, or people wonder how I memorize all my lines before I film my YouTube videos. But the truth is I don't use a teleprompter or a teleprompter app and I definitely don't memorize everything before I start filming. Here is a raw and real look at what filming my YouTube videos really looks like. So I'm set up to film here. I've got the camera here and I've got my laptop that I just set out of frame so that I can glance at my script. So I'm just gonna look over here, read the first line of my outro and then deliver it to the camera. Getting the right gear set up, developing your shot list, and knowing getting the right gear set up, developing your shot list, and knowing how to make mistakes the right way are all are all massive factors in improving your confidence on camera. Are all massive factors in improving your confidence on camera and filming your YouTube videos more efficiently. Basically, if I realize that I mess up a line, I'm just gonna pause for a second, look at it again, and start over from the most like sensible restart point. And I'm not necessarily trying to do it exactly word for word, but I am trying to capture the essence of what I wrote in the script. The key to videos that feel seamless and will have people in your comments section asking how you memorize the whole script before filming is really just simply knowing how to make mistakes the right way. When you mess up a line, because you will, the key is to stop and pause and restart your line or your talking point or whatever you were just saying from a natural breaking point or as natural a breaking point as you can find. If I screw up in the middle of a sentence, then sometimes I will back up and restart the whole thing because I think that there's gonna be more flow to it if I can like, you know, say a long list of items all in one go rather than having to cut between. But if it's a really long segment and I just don't wanna to have to redo what I just said or I think I did a good job of it up until a certain point, then I will just restart from the beginning of the last word or the beginning of the last sentence fragment. I literally just did that there. Beginning of the last word or the beginning of the last or the beginning of the last sentence fragment. This is really what I think sets apart filming for YouTube from other types 
of mediums. So for example, if you're used to recording on TikTok or Instagram Reels within the app, then you're probably used to filming segment by segment. And if you screw it up, like just backspacing the last segment and then redoing it completely. When you're filming for YouTube, you don't have to worry about that in the moment. Like you really can lean on the fact that you're gonna edit it later. And it's just trying to think about what it's going to be like to edit it later when you're filming so you can make your life easier for yourself. And so from years of experience from me filming, I've learned that it's very important if you mess up and you need to cut something out to take a little bit of a pause, take a beat. Because what you don't want is to have to cut from like mid word to mid word because you're gonna have a little bit of a uh, kind of like a stuttering sound are all, all massive factors. But if you can make sure to pause and actually leave some dead air in between, you'll be able to achieve a clean cut. And like, honestly, the same is true even if you don't screw up and you just are literally taking a pause to read your script that you've got sitting next to you. <laughs> or if you just pause to think about what you wanna say next, I do that a lot too. A lot, a lot of beginner creators have this problem and trust me, I know this from my years of editing videos for other creators, because we do that over at my agency, Creatorly Media. A lot of beginners want to treat the camera like it's a live stream, like they're giving a presentation to a group, which makes sense. That's the most like kind of real life comparison to filming a YouTube video. So people feel like they just need to plow through and keep going even if they kind of like misspeak or kind of bungle up their words a little bit, they feel like, okay, I better just keep going because the people are watching. Uh, but you don't need to do that because we edit this. So just talk to the camera like you know it's going to be edited. Stop, take a breath restart and we'll cut out the part in between. It's all good. And later on when you're editing and you come across these mistakes, it's as easy as cutting out the pause in between. So when you come across a moment like this, getting the right gear set up, developing your shot list and knowing how to mistake. <laughs> it's just about cutting before the mistake. And then cutting before you fixed it. <laughs> Getting the right gear set up and knowing how to make mistakes right. It's pretty seamless, but sometimes I will actually go ahead and add a little bit of a punch in. Getting the right gear set up and knowing how to make mistakes right are all going to make it. You can add a little bit of a punch in, like zoom in the scale of your first or second clip, but honestly, I don't think jump cuts are that jarring because it's very common here on YouTube to just cut directly from the same frame to the next frame. So you can do either one, but just rest assured that you don't have to use a teleprompter or have your lines perfectly memorized when you go to record your videos. You just need to know how to make mistakes correctly and how to fix them efficiently. You don't need to start over, just cut it out. Getting the right gear set up, developing your shot list, and knowing how to make mistakes right are all going to make a huge difference in your confidence on camera and your ability to film your YouTube videos faster. But of course, you wanna make sure that the video you're filming is for an engaging and interesting script. So if you wanna know my secrets for writing a YouTube outline for a video that's gonna keep your viewers watching to the end and wanting more, then you're gonna to wanna to check out this video next where I walk you through my viral YouTube script formula. So go check that video out next. As always, thank you so much for watching. I hope you're having adventures and following your dreams and I'll catch you over in this video. Bye.